Hi, I'm Jess Carter, Chair of Need, um, and really excited to be here at Nethercott House, one of three of the farms for city children, um, just on the edge of Dartmoor. Um, really excited to see what there is in store at Nethercott House and really explore the farm. So looking forward to meeting Tim shortly. Um, and we'll go from there. We shall look forward to exploring it with you. So, yeah, we're here at, at Nethercott House, Farms for City Children. Um, this is one of three farms that we we run. We've got one in Pembrokeshire, we've all got one in Gloucestershire. Um, but the charity started here, it started here in 1976, so we're just coming up to our 50th anniversary. Um, and our first bus full of children um, arrived then. Um, this week we've got a, a group from London, about 50% of our children at this site come from London um, and they come for a full week so they're with us Monday through to Friday. So it's a very different experience to a day visit or a, a drop in at, at some sort of farm. It's, it's a totally different and much more immersive sort of experience. So when the children are with us um, what we basically do is we divide them down into three groups and they're out working on the farm all day. Our first activity with them starts at 7.30 in the morning. So they're out before they've had their own breakfast. Um, and you know, that really important message about checking that the animals uh, and everything is fed and in good fettle before they come in and have their own uh, breakfast, just like a farm would. Um, and then we work with them progressively through the day with all sorts of different activities, um, back in for food, back out again. Um, and it's a really, for us, the, the really important story is about that sort of field to fork journey. So we've got all sorts of animals, which hopefully we'll get, we'll get around and have a look at it, uh, a little bit later. Um, we've got big gardening and growing set up. Um, and all of that is focused around bringing food into the house. And the children are involved with that every step of the way, harvesting vegetables, washing. We do cooking sessions with them. It's all coming into the house. So we're not really commercial farmers. We're not selling out very much. We're not selling very much out to open markets and things like that. The, the animals and the gardens and everything are here to, to sort of feed um, into the house. So I'm at the moment upstairs in Nethercott House where we've got 25 children staying with us. I have a group of 13 from Ashmore. Guys, Woo! just say hello. 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 Okay. So they're all in the background. We've just been cooking some pasties. So we're in the process. They've made the pastry. They've rolled them out. Um, and then we've, we're going to add the meat. So most of the meat comes from Nethercott here. So we've got pork today in our pasties. And we've got leeks that these guys have been harvesting in the garden yesterday. The kitchen have prepared it. These guys are going to cook it and we're going to eat it for lunch. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. Okay, so I started here in uh, 2017 as manager on this site. Um, my background is I come from a farming family, but I actually trained to be a primary school teacher and as a primary school teacher for a big chunk of my career. I've also taught in secondary and I taught in another chunk of my career, I taught in universities, um, training teachers before you know, doing the full circle and coming back here five years ago, six years ago. This is our uh, Victorian Wall Garden. Um, we had heritage lottery money you know, about three or four years ago uh, to renovate this and we, we recap the walls, put in this rose arch, put in some new pathways um, and reinstated the old uh, pit house up there. Um, and this is where we grow lots and lots of different vegetables that go into the house. The children are working here every day, they do the planting, they do the harvesting, um, and, and uh, it's a very, very important part of our field to fork journey is the kind of vegetables. Thank you, Tim. It's beautiful, you can see him working hard here to get it just right. And I'd imagine you can produce quite a serious amount actually <laughs> from this garden. Oh, absolutely. And the microclimate here is fantastic. It's always a couple of degrees warmer. I think it starts a little bit faster. Yeah. Okay, so we've got quite a good composting setup here. We recompost all of the seed waste from the house, so nothing goes into the bin. And it all goes through what we call the dragon down there, the Ryden composter, which is a hot composter. The children pour the, the waste food into the top there, turn the handle, and it makes its way through the hot composter and drops out the other end. And then they build these bins. You can see they're just brick built. We've, we've kind of cemented a, a ring of bricks in the bottom. And then the children build up the layers as their compost is growing. And this is the stuff that comes out of the hot composter. And it'll mature in here for just two or three months uh, before we use it uh, in our garden operations. Okay, so this is our roundhouse, which is located um, in what we call the spinny. It's effectively a, a form of forest school, but it's very unstructured what we're doing here. Um, 
each child gets a, a, an afternoon and really it's up to them. They can choose what they want to do. If they want to charge around, they charge around. If they want to build dens, they build dens. We can light fires, we've got some tools, we can make stuff out of rush, we can make stuff out of willow um, and generally have a, a, a really great time. And it's the sort of experience that the children we're working with coming out of inner city areas just very rarely get that opportunity. Um, and it's just wonderful to see them really let loose and, and engage with that. The roundhouse itself is brilliant. We had this built about three or four years ago. Um, Tiffin and her brood of 11 piglets, which is pretty impressive for this rare breed. Large blacks. See the piglets play. Hey, come and have a look at it. Oh, can you hear them cheeping, right? Oh. Should we pop him back in with his friends again? <laughs> We've got some incubators over here. One just hatching out. And that's it, bro. And then what have we got over here? We've got some slightly older ones. I just realised I've done this. One. So this is um, our polytunnel. It's very much set up for children to work in, as you can see. It could be much more productive if we use the ground differently. But what we're trying to do in here is all year round, we keep at least five growing crops that children can taste. So even if they come here in January, December, whatever, we can come in here and they can pick leaves and taste little bits from five different um, plants. Uh, as, you know, so that's a, a really, really important part of, of what we do. But in the summer, we'll soon be getting going with tomatoes. So the whole of this side, all the way down, will be a wall of tomatoes. Uh, last year, we grew uh, loofah and beans and all sorts of stuff down the middle here. So it's a bit of a jungle, um, but a, a great place to come and work, uh, especially on a day like today when it's a bit, a bit damp and cold out there. We have our main uh, free-range uh, flock out here. We, of course, just got out yesterday after being locked down all winter for avian flu. Um, and they're in the main chicken shed down the bottom there where the children collect eggs and things like that first thing in the morning um, and let them out and then we've got these smaller runs where we've got sort of little breeding setups and it's the eggs from from these hens that go into the incubators um, and that we grow on to, to keep the flock going um, but it's very it's a very special place um, here and you know really gets under your skin and I think it, it really gets under the skin of the children who visit too um, so by the end of the week, you know, when you've had a whole immersive experience, day in, day out, coming out, doing chicken, uh, collecting eggs several times a week and all those sorts of things, they begin to feel a sense of ownership. Um, and that's the most wonderful thing for me. Um, it feels like their farm, it feels like the countryside belongs to them as much as anybody, which is kind of what it's all about. Um, so it's a, it's a very special place. So um, this is Seb, who's our big cobbler who, who uh, lives here in this beautiful yard, um, along with Eric, Pony, and we've got one donkey below, Applejack, and uh, we keep them for grooming. We don't ride, but the children groom them most of the day. Um, so it's really wonderful to have such big animals that we can get right up close to um, and really, really engage with. And there's been some brilliant, brilliant stories over the years. Um, Michael Morfog always tells a story of a child that suddenly was missing one night and they couldn't find this child anywhere in the house and the child was an elected mute who didn't normally speak and eventually they found them standing looking into the stable and talking to the horse. Um, so an amazing experience I think for lots of children to get up so close and personal to such a big powerful animal. So this is um, Burrow Farm which we've recently taken back from the tenant um, which is great, it's giving us a lot more acres. Um, we work very closely with our neighbours, um, our farm farmer over there, our Bridgetown farm, which you might be able to see through the trees there. And the children go out uh, every day, half past seven in the morning, help feed cattle and things like that. He's a commercial farmer, he's raising cattle, he's raising sheep um, for profit. And so it's really good to get that contrast of what we're doing here, which is a bit more sort of small holding, hobby farming. A lot of what we've got here is set up purely for the work we do with children and for, for produce to go into the house, but what he's doing out there is um, much more uh, commercial. So he comes with his tractor every morning, we've got an adapted trailer, the kids will pile onto the trailer, button up, uh, buckle up, uh, and he takes them off to the farm and they, they do all sorts of different activities there. They go first thing in the morning and then again 
uh, later on in the afternoon uh, every day. So that's a great experience. We're standing in a field called Bur uh, Burrow Brimclose. We've just received funding from the Woodland Trust uh, Tree Tree Farm Project and we're going to do a big regenerative agriculture um, project in this field. So there will be, we will be creating 18 um, fenced off areas, circular areas scattered right across the, the, this field. And in the centre of each one will be a kind of big canopy tree of the future. So quite a big tree to start with, with, it, with no plastic, with a cactus guard around it. Um, and then surrounding that will be 100 plus other shrubby, thorny shrubby trees, fruits, nuts, all those sorts of things. Um, which will grow up and sort of protect that canopy tree of the future as it goes up. Um, we've taken the decision not to use plastic, so it's quite experimental. Lots of people are really interested in what we're doing here. And then it will effectively turn this field and land down the bottom there into a, a, a very old landscape which we would call a wood pasture. So in amongst these um, islands, there'll be a gate so Tito wants to come in and have that sort of therapeutic <laughs> feeding of different fruits and nuts and stuff so we can destroy their children and manage them. And over time the fences eventually will rot and fade away and we'll be left with a wooded pasture area which will, will graze uh, not intensively at all using our new, our new uh, Devon Ruby cattle over there 